Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back in. So today we're going to be kicking off the DIY recording series uh, by taking a look at what we can do with just one microphone. So the first mic that we're going to be looking at today, um, this is going to be the least expensive by far that we're going to look at. This is a Pile Pro PDMIC 78. And basically what this is, is a Chinese copy of a Shure SM57, which as we all know is pretty much the standard for most acoustic instruments. You can mic amps with it. Just about anything on the, on the drum kit can be mic'd with a 57. So we're gonna be taking a look at this $20 mic and we're gonna be using it in what I like to call the middle mic configuration. Uh, this is something that I first saw on one of Charlie Waymeyer's videos. Uh, if you haven't seen his stuff, it's really cool. It's worth checking out. Um, it is an example of um, kind of like an unrealistic environment because it does take place in a you know super professional recording studio with top dollar mics, excellent gear, that sort of thing. But the concept uh, is concrete regardless. So uh, I'm going to show you how we have this mic set up. We're going to go ahead, take a recording sample, and then do some very light editing to it and just kind of see what we can do with one $20 microphone. So as you can see, the way we've positioned the microphone is basically at a 45 degree angle over the kick drum, pointed roughly at the snare and approximately splitting the distance between the toms. Um, I've found that for most purposes, the placement is not super sensitive in terms of how effective it is and something approximately like this will usually work pretty well. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna pick up the batter side of the kick, it's gonna pick up the snare and the toms pretty well, and then usually there will be enough bleed from the cymbals and the hi-hats to get the job done as well. So what I'm gonna do now is just start a quick session and uh, show you what this mic is capable of. So coming out of the back of the mic, we've got just a regular XLR connection. And that's going to be going into our interface, which is a uh, Tascam US16X08. And um, this does have eight preamp settings or gain settings for the first eight, actually the first um, 10 inputs rather. And um, I have this set to roughly quarter volume there on channel number one. Um, you don't need a whole lot and we can always crank it up um, afterwards. So we're running that into Logic. Um, as said, in future videos, I'm going to see if I can get GarageBand to fire up on this computer. It is an older laptop. I had to update it to run Logic, and I'm not sure if it's still compatible with GarageBand. But we'll be using Logic today and just doing some very surface level um, after processing in the software. So I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up, and we're just going to play a couple bars, and I'll show you what we can get out of one mic. So now that we've got our recording, what we're going to do is go into Logic and I'm just going to show you a couple basic things that I usually do. Um, we're going to look at compression, EQ, and potentially a little, a little bit of reverb. Uh, we're not going to have to worry about panning in this case because we've only got the one mic. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of show you how we do all this and then I'm going to overdub 
the edited sound back over the drum clip that you just saw. Okay, so we're gonna get started here in Logic. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select this little guy up here, which is basically like a loop setting. And we're gonna drag and drop, and we're basically gonna highlight the entire project. This is not supposed to be a how to use Logic video. There's plenty of those out there. This is just gonna be some of the more surface level basic things that I like to do. So let's first go ahead and we're gonna take a listen and see what this sounds like. Okay, so that was just the quick run through that you saw of the snare, the toms, and then the kick. And as you can tell right away, we have pretty good coverage already. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to move my loop section up to where the whole kit comes in, and we're going to listen to that. Okay, so I think that sounds pretty good. And what we're going to go do now is add a couple basic level effects to it and uh, see if we can crispen it up a little bit more. So over here on the left-hand side, uh, we've got our effects section and we're going to start with compression and EQ and we're going to take a look and see uh, what we can do to maybe beef this up a little bit. So we're going to start playing again. We're going to turn on the compressor. So one of the really cool things about the Apple products, and this goes for GarageBand as well as Logic, is the presets are really pretty good, especially for more novice people that might not know how to set the parameters of a certain um, a certain plugin, such as a compressor. So we're just going to go ahead and start here with the classic drums, and we'll probably cycle through the first couple and see if we can find one that sounds good. All right, so drum room sounds pretty good, and it looks like everything's working as it should. And uh, so we're gonna leave this alone now and take a look at some EQ. We're gonna turn the EQ on. Now, let's take a look. We're gonna start with drum presets again. And now we have quite a few to choose from here and it's a little bit different because we're only working with one mic. So we might wanna look at um, a preset that would beef up one area of this recording that is a little bit weak. So we probably won't wanna do anything to brighten the hi-hat, brighten the overheads or anything like that because I think this mic is gonna pick up a fair amount of high-end signal. So why don't we take a look at something like maybe Floor Tom EQ and see if that's gonna beef up the low end and maybe give us a little bit more attack as well. So we can see that by doing that, we did pick up some low frequency as would be expected because of this little bump uh, here around 104 Hertz or so but we did so at the expense of some of the bottom end of our snare. So this is where we're going to start adjusting the EQ a little bit. So with some simple EQ and a little bit of compression, now we've got this recording sounding pretty good. So the last thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and add a little bit of reverb to give it a little bit more ambiance and maybe mask the fact that we're in a pretty dead room. So 
So we're going to go down and we're going to pick something that's a little bit more conservative in terms of what kind of effect it's going to have. So let's start with just a drum chamber, see what that gives us. Mm, it's a little bit too much. I think we're getting closer. Let's add a little bit of length to that decay. Well, as you can see, we were able to get a pretty good result for such a cheap microphone. Um, and as said, it's only one mic. And you know, if that's what we can do with one $20 mic, then it'll be interesting to see what we can do with a bunch more mics. So um, again, this is a Pile PDMIC 78. It's a copy of an SM57. Um, next time, we'll be taking a look at the Audio-Technica AT2020, which is a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Um, and it is uh, something that would be considered more of an intermediate microphone. It's about $100 and it's going to give you room to grow into a higher quality recording scenario, whereas these eventually will limit what you're able to do with them. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please drop a like. If you have any questions or you'd like to maybe request a future topic, please leave it down in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.